hello there. Sorry from 17 once again. This is my hard no damage run. This is stage 15. It's called Shimba Shimabara Assault. And this is part one. So the first room there has a bunch of randomly spawning enemies, so I immediately run forward to trigger the, the Genma General to turn up. Once again, the test of valor includes using the enemies to Isen the General, because the General has a lot of life, and he will take a big old pound in. Like, look how much life this dude has. Uh, luckily, when he does this swing, it's not too difficult to do the deflect and Isen off of, although I'll show you that I'm not very good at doing that. Uh, the thing with this guy is when he gets down to low life, he will start adding an elemental tilt to that attack. And the element he does is unblockable. So you want to be really... That's it. You want to be real careful. Luckily enough, this guy is ice, and ice does not have a big AoE effect. He just does kind of like a, a line of, of stalactite might crystal things. This is the chain stab technique. I don't recommend doing it with Ohatsu. I prefer doing it with Roberta. Or Roberto, sorry. A would. In, in Spanish, anyway, would represent the, the feminine part of the language, as opposed to masculine, which is usually O. But there's Raphael's gauntlets for Roberto. And then we can move onwards through this huge, giant door. Humongous door, the game calls it. <laughs> but anybody thinking about picking this up who can't get the emulator to play, and has a PS2, and they think this looks great, which it does, I looked at the prices last night on a website of one of the local stores of mine, and this was going for about six quid. So, I suppose in the PS2 games, in the grand scheme of things, that's a little bit dearer than some of them. I expected it to be about two to three quid, but some games just retain value, apparently. And the funny thing is, is that that shop will buy it from you for a quid, and then they sell it for seven quid, because the markups are just disgusting with games. But... You know, it is available, it is a great game, and if you like it, you do have three other Onimusha titles to, to sink your teeth into. You just have to bear in mind that you're starting with the the most accessible first. Also, you might recognise where we are. We are, in fact, going back through that place that I said was pretty terrible level design. And, unfortunately, we're going to be doing more terrible level design. Because this is one of the, the missions that is just not very fun. But checking the new gloves, you'll notice Raphael's gauntlets give us 73 attack, and that's at level 1. We have a level 7 gloves that give us 91 attack, so just imagine if we had level 7 Raphael's. And that's one of the biggest issues with this game. When you commit to upgrading something, it's almost like negative equity, because you know you're going to pick something up in a level coming up, which will make the thing you've upgraded look like a piece of shit. And... There's always the question, do you waste the orbs now and have a, an advantage at the moment, or do you save them and be at a little bit of a disadvantage to maximise on profit? Personally, I think you should play however you choose to. Uh, I think you can survive both ways, but just be aware that certain weapons are so much better than other ones that you want to preferably grab them and upgrade them, like the one I'm using, like the one I was using before this. Those two weapons will see you through this game. You know, you don't even have to get this one, but this one is arguably the best if you can get it quick. So how does this work then? This we're going back through this area, and now we're putting these these like drive shafts into these machines that power certain areas. And it's the only reason we're doing this is because apparently this is a different warehouse factory place. Although I think we can all agree. It's identical to the last place, it just has a couple of different assets put in it, and we have to go through it in a slightly different fashion than we did the first time. And it's just elongated for the sake of being elongated. Did we need to come back through a similar area? I don't think we did, but at the same time, you know, it's more gameplay, you know, it's more opportunities to, to play and, and enjoy the product that you've purchased. So, do you blame them? Not so much. Maybe they had restrictions, scheduling issues. I'm not too sure. I just, I would have preferred a new stage, but, you know, who wouldn't? So, there's the commander's ring. You'll notice it gives us a plus 10 to our attack. The thing with the, the plus stats and the plus percentages is you need to make sure that whichever one you pick is the highest. Because, you know, getting plus 10 to your attack is a big thing. You know, if your attack is 5, plus 10 is double what you've got. 
And if you're wearing something that's, you know, attack plus 10% and your attack is 10, you're not getting a lot from that. If you put attack plus 10 on, you're getting, you know, 200%, well, an extra 100%, so you're 200% stronger at that point. So you'd always need to make sure that whatever equipment you're choosing benefits you the most if you're wanting to go that route. I, I personally, there's a certain few ones that I'll put on to be specific. Obviously, there's a, a few accessories which are just better than almost every other accessory. Uh, the only problem with those is they come very late in the game. There's there's rings that increase your critical damage by, I think it's 40%, and your standard combos by 40%, but both of those rings literally come on the second to last level in the game, which could have used them a lot earlier, but I understand why, for balance reasons, that they didn't give you access to them. But you've seen me do this room before. It's just a balancing act of not getting hit by this douchey thing. It's got to kick me, block, go through the door. You're immortal during these door animations, so you don't have to worry about getting clipped. And the thing that, to bear in mind here, what we're doing is... Once you've done those drives, there's going to be one that you can only access by using Jubei. And... That's the one that I got stuck on the most when I was trying to, you know, to do this level. Ooh, be careful there. Do you see how the enemies spawn in that big black cloud? Well, they can actually attack before they've become physical. And it's it's one of the biggest issues with just the enemy respawning mechanic in this game. And for the most, the game is very fair. You know, it's very methodical. There's, there's nothing too cheap in it. There's nothing that I would say is unavoidable. But those moments can really grate on you because how the hell are you supposed to know that in that second you were about to be attacked? Like, you see the cloud and you literally have to block because if you don't, you run the risk of, of taking an unnecessary hit. And later on in the game, they spawn enemies in front of you and they spawn enemies on you as you're running through zones. So the amount of times I got clipped by somebody who just poof out of thin air punched me, it's, you know, it's not cool, but it is what it is. You've got to put up with it if you want to play and the good things about this game outweigh the bad which is always you know, what you want but it, I do think this is a title that's intended to you know go back through the levels once you beat them and pick up all the the character specific stuff and level while you do that and get orbs while you do that because there's certain moments like this you literally need Tenkai to talk to those corpses and those corpses give you uh, access to different rooms and you need those different rooms to, to finish this puzzle so it's just this balancing act of swapping characters and it definitely feels contrived because you're swapping characters just for the sake of swapping characters and uh, you know maybe if I'd have leveled up the, the people and leveled their weapons up I'd probably have more incentive to want to use them but as it stands I, I pretty much use uh, is it Satsuki I think his name is I just use the main guy and I'm using a costume on the main guy because I actually really like the costume. So my incentive to play with the other people is really low, except for, you know, Roberto, who I happen to like because, you know, I like the way he fights. I think he's got some really cool moves and admittedly you haven't seen me use him too much, but it is what it is. So we can't get through that door just yet. We're going to need more things, which means exploring more of this area, which... It's just... <laughs> I'm really curious how level design like this works. You know, when they sit down and they plan it out and they map out how they want it to function. You know, we're going to have this central room that has rooms that lead off from it, which are all colour-coded, and we're going to have an operational lift in the middle that's going to take you between them. And it's going to be... A series of going to the right room to pick up the right thing to access the other rooms and if done correctly you know you go left twice in this one you come out you go right three times you go in that one you come out and you know you go back six times forward right and that's how it works and it probably sounds you know really functional and and an engineering based you know they've, they've engineered it to work in such a way that it makes sense you know it's like it's like rewiring a plug. Once you see the components, you know what you're doing. But when you're playing it, it just really doesn't feel that way. And it doesn't help that they reuse a, a room that you've already got previous, you know, 
level design paths built up in your brain. So when you're looking at this place, you're remembering where you went through it last time to do a different thing. So now you're looking at it as, you know, well, where do I go now? You know, this doesn't make sense because everything that this place represented in my mind previously, I have to throw out because it's a completely new way of approaching it. And I suppose it would be similar if the level design was procedurally generated like some of those puzzles were in the previous level. So I suppose we should be grateful that they don't do that. But as it stands, the both the levels that use this zone and the place in the uh, Onimusha Awoken, you know, the identical room level bullshit, those are easily the worst areas of the game purely on a level flow perspective for the simple reason that they don't flow and I can imagine many children many younger gamers getting to these levels and quitting and not playing the game because they've gone from it being you know pretty binary you know, zero to one one to zero into this just like London underground ground map of, of color-coded bullshit that is a very important item right there. That is the Fudo Horn. So, what this allows you to do is this gives you a 50% or, or no, sorry, it's a 50 stat increase to your attack. And when you bear in mind that my sword has 188, 50 stat increase on attack power is like one fourth potentially. It's a little bit less than that, but it's it's a big boost. The trade-off, however, is you cannot block. And that might seem like you know, a double-sided sword, and it is, but it's a situational weapon. If you know you can get some free hits where you're not in danger, you should always be going into the menu and swapping that on, because it just adds so much power to you. And you're going to see me use it with Ohatsu, who's the lady with the gun, because when you're using a gun and you're ranging enemies, why the hell do you need to block? And also you're going to see me use it against a couple of bosses, namely the last boss, because once you've dodged his attacks and once you've unveiled his weakness, he lets you beat him up. And compared to the last boss on Onimusha 2, and I can't remember the last boss on Onimusha 3, I barely remember Onimusha 1's last boss. I know it was like a dragony ser serpent y in brass dude. But the last boss on this game is the worst boss in the game. It's not very fun, there's, there's nothing really original or interesting about it, and it just lasts far too long. So. It's a fantastic way of speeding up an already incredibly just monotonous fight. And the thing that frustrates me most, I think, about the last boss is the fight before it. I have my my grievances with that fight because of the way it's designed. But at least it's balls to the wall and silly. And if you'd have ended on it, I don't think anybody would have had a problem. Because, spoiler alert, it's essentially two giant flying gods fighting. It's, it's just that great moment of, this is batshit crazy and nothing like anything else in the game, and I like that. Very similar to Devil May Cry, very similar to Lost Planet. In fact, I think the final boss on Lost Planet is, is one of the best final bosses on, on any 360 game, or, or PS3 game. Because you've been so used to f using the slow-ass VS suits, that when you get the one that can fly, you're just like, what is going on? This game suddenly went from, you know, Mech Commander to Zone of the Enders, and I love Zone of the Enders, so to me, it was perfect. You know, you went from Crown Hounds to something you actually want to play. As I've openly stated several times, I am not a big fan of slow robot games. I want fast robots, you know, I do not know why all robots are not fast. <laughs> because once you've played Zone of the Enders, you just can't go back. And if anybody's looking for an action game that's a little bit different than the norm, Zone of the Enders Second Runner is definitely a fun one to try out. I have a walkthrough for that game on, uh, is it called Extreme, I think? And that is a very challenging game too. There's a couple of moments in it which are really going to push your, your limits on, on checkpoints. Which, that's the great thing about recording this PC stuff on the emulator. Checkpoints are never an issue ever again. So beautiful. Thank you for watching, and you take care now.